Hello everyone, it's Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon, and it's time for another Fates Collide standard deck. I know it's been a while, but check out my most recent video and there'll be some excuses there for you if you want to go on with that. But um, we're looking at another um, Fates Collide Nationals contender and even potentially a Worlds contender here. Um, it is Greninja, it's a very powerful deck, inherently with um, a lot of inbuilt support. Uh, you pretty much set up most games quite similarly in most matchups and that's a really appealing thing for a lot of players because you always expect to have a certain game plan with Greninja which is pretty cool but there's also a bunch of different cool plays available to it so if you don't know about Greninja it's all about Greninja break 170 HP for a break evolution is quite nice bear in mind he is effectively a stage 3 um, but we do sometimes cheat our way um, with some of our lower evolutions but um, Giant Water Shuriken is the most absurd ability. I keep whenever we mention Greninja, I have to say how absurd Giant Water Shuriken is. It's a monstrous ability, and the deck is completely functioned around this. Um, you once during a turn, you may if he's in the active, you may discard a Water Energy from your hand and ch place six counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon anywhere on the board. So, absolutely monstrous damage. Uh, not even the attack. So. With you know one or two Greninja breaks into play, you can do really really good damage and really control the board, you know all around. You can take prizes on Shaman EXs from the opponent for racing. You can um, soften up the active position Pokemon and then finish them off with attacks. So plenty of different options for the Greninja player. Really really good um, ability. Fantastic. Uh, we'll go sort of downwards in the evolution line. I know it's a weird way of doing it, but I think that's pretty um, important for Greninja. So the stage 2 Greninja, we have a 3-1 split, that's the most common way. I know some players are going to just 4 of this one. Um, I actually like playing just 4 of this one personally, uh, but for the purpose of the video, I'll show off the XY as well, because that's the most common way this deck is built. Uh, Shadow Stitching is an awesome attack. We do 40, and basically we do a Hex Maniac to our opponent at the same time. Uh, they can't have any abilities, which is pretty awesome. Um, it really does slow down a whole bunch of decks. Um, think about the Aqua Box deck. They need the Aqua Tube to retreat around the board. You can see we are playing Lysander, so sometimes a Shadow Stitching plus um, Lysander is a great stall option against things like Hooper EX that they play, which is very cool. Um, also, just things like Bronzong decks. Um, again, Dark decks rely on Stand In, so oftentimes it actually works nicely as a stalling option with the Lysander, forcing really awkward plays out of the opponent, which is pretty cool. Um, in general though, it's obviously huge in Mirror, um, but in general there are turns when you can play an N and then go for the Shadow Stitching in stuff like Night March. Um, just so many options for this ability lock on certain turns. You can be very selective and get really, really nice disruption in random parts in any game, which is really cool. Then we have Moonlight Slash as well, the more powerful option. We do a 60 base, but if we return a Water Energy from this Pokemon to the hand, we get to do an additional 20. So really, really nice. It's synergistic with the ability because we get to put energy back into the hand um, for following turns where we can then use Giant Water Shuriken. Um, also, we just get the extra damage. Uh, you want extra damage most of the time. And bear in mind, if the Greninja is knocked out, then we don't lose the energy. It's still in our hand. So, so many reasons why this Greninja is phenomenal. 130 HP is kind of nice, and the free retreat is so amazing. Um, it means that we can move between our Greninja breaks much more freely. So, it's a very, very nice option. We do still play the one of XY Greninja. Like I say, I'm just showing this one off. Um, I think it's more common to play this card, um, but I personally like just the full breakpoint version because. I think mainly just the free retreat is ridiculous and having the option to use the better attacks is so good. But people like playing this card because you have the additional ability Water Shuriken, which is half of the giant Water Shuriken that the break can do. Uh, so you discard a Water Energy from the hand, but this can be from anywhere. He can be on the bench when this happens, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can just have this supplementing your damage at any point in the game. If you do, uh, put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So Pretty useful for dealing with things like Joltik, that's one of the main ones. Um, it really does balance out the Night March matchup to be, you know, fairly favourable. It's threatening quite early on, a turn earlier than the break would be, so um, we can threaten these shurikens very early, and that's pretty cool. Miss Slash does 50 and isn't affected by weakness or resistance, so it's clearly a downgrade um, of the breakpoint Greninja's attacks, um, but it's still an option if you have to attack with him. Same HP and the one retreat cost is the reason why I personally don't like it, but I know a lot of players like the XY Greninja, so 
play around with the counts. Um, at the moment, I'm on a full four, so bear that in mind. Um, but for the purpose of the list, I thought I'd show off the XY Ninja. Uh, we are playing four Frogadier. Normally in stage two decks, you won't be seeing four of a stage one card. It's normally all based on rare candy. But Frogadier's attack is insane, and it's one of the main reasons why the Greninja deck is so good right now. Um, for just a single water energy, we get to use water duplicates and search the deck for up to three other Frogadier and put them onto the bench. So from this point on in the game, after you know turn two, when we go for water duplicates, um, from then on, our Greninjas are basically stage one Pokemon and the Greninja break is basically a stage two Pokemon. So um, it makes it a lot easier to get multiple Greninjas out turn after turn. So we really do cheat our way around evolution with this attack and it's a really, really nice one. So... Again, the Frogadier is a huge factor in this deck and why it's helpful. Even the Froakie serves a nice purpose. It's a 4 of, uh, 60 HP is nice, but Bubble is a very cool option as well. On a coin flip, we get to paralyze the opponent's active Pokemon. There are certain matchups where this is really helpful. Um, if we're going second against aggressive decks, things like Night March and things like the Aqua Box, if we can flip heads and get that Bubble going... Um, that's really cool for us. We've bought ourselves a turn. Sometimes we save ourselves one prize. And if it's Aquabox, sometimes we save ourselves losing two prizes um, because they often use Articuno against us. So Bubble, a very, very strong option for this deck. It's one to keep an eye out for because multiple times in games when you're just being hit with like a Hex Maniac, um, you need to protect your Greninja Breaks on the bench. So free retreat out, go into a Froakie and go for that coin flip because sometimes you buy yourself a nice turn and strain an extra resource out of the opponent, force them to use another VS Seeker for another Hex Maniac um, the following turn. So really, really nice option at many points in the game, uh, but very good against the early aggressive decks. Following up from this, we are playing two Jirachi Promo. Jirachi Promo, with that Stardust attack for just one colorless energy, does 10, and discards a special energy attached to the opponent's active. If you do, prevent all effects, including damage done to this Pokemon during the next turn. Very, very strong option. Again, it's a balancing thing um, for dealing with Night March because they can hex us for about three or four turns in a row. And during that time, you need to be keeping up in the board somehow. And the way we do that is by getting rid of their energy rather than taking prizes every turn. Um, so a Stardust here and there really strains their resources. They have to take six physical prizes because we're not playing any EX Pokemon in this deck. So against decks that are very double colorless energy reliant, we are really going to Try and out-resource them. So Night March, Rayquaza, um, anything else. Seismato, Giratina doesn't like um, Stardust at all. Even Vespiquen, Vileplume, our matchup is horrible. <laughs> um, but Jirachi gives us turns to get rid of double colorless energies. If we can do that, then maybe eventually we can get a duplicates off. If we get one duplicates off, then we can start uh, progressing into Greninjas and winning the game. So the Jirachi gives us a hope and a fighting chance against the... Vespicon Vileplume, so it's a very important two of. Sometimes players go up to three. I think with two Sacred Ash, I'm quite happy to get two. You will often have enough access to them, um, so I'm happy with a two count. On to the items now. We have a few one-offs. Uh, firstly, Professor's Letter, just a nice option for searching out our water energy. We can find it via Trainer's Mail. This is a pretty cool option. Obviously, this deck likes having multiple energy in the hand because we can instantly play one down for a Shuriken here or there, and we... Um, need them to attack of course as well so um, just access to energy early is pretty nice uh, one evo soda this is a way to get into your frogadier so it's like a fifth well it's actually a sixth search card with the level to find the frogadier turn two so that's really high odds of getting the frogadier turn two um but also you get the additional greedy benefit of getting into the Greninjas and the Greninja break later on in the game so if you don't see this one early you can see it late and it's still good for you the flip-flop side is if you see the levable early, it's, you know, a sick option to get that Frogadier. But you only really want this early um, because you sometimes want a two Froakie start. This is a typical start for Greninja. You want one Froakie in the active, one Froakie on the bench so that um, you're expecting your opponent to knock out the active Froakie with just 60 HP. So that you promote the new Froakie, evolve into Frogadier, get the duplicates going. That's a typical um, couple of turns for the Greninja players. So um, the level ball is the more early game. And I can see you flip-flopping the Evo Soda and the Level Ball um, accordingly, based on how aggressive you think the metagame is going to be. The Evo Soda is the way greedier option, um, but at the moment I'm going for a 1-1 split. I can see it being too Level Ball um, right now. 
I would. I don't think I'd ever play two Evo Soda. That's like super greedy, super value. Um, but instead, I think you just need to compensate for the early game as best you can. Even with things like N in format, where we're much more consistent than we used to be, um, I think keeping one or two level ball is probably correct in my opinion. So we are playing for dive ball to complement this. This is the one that can search everything out, which is pretty perfect. Well, at least everything from the Greninja line. So you're always happy to see dive ball. So plenty of search cards because it's so vital to hit turn two water duplicates. It's the most important thing you can do with this deck. Um, you need that setup. Pretty much every game you need that setup. So getting these dive balls, having potentially, like I say, six search cards or potential balls. I know uh, Evo Soda isn't a ball search card, but it's it's a search card. Um, we have six options to get that Froki straight away. And with Trainer's Mail and N and Sycamore, we should pretty much always get there. Of course, we can also physically just have it in the hand at the time. So really good options to get that Frogadier. And that's what's most important in this game. Uh, we are playing two Sacred Ash. I alluded to it earlier. Um, we are playing thick Pokemon lines, but it's all based on Greninja. Like, it's a really thick line of ninjas, but at the same time... Um, we sacrificed Froki early on, we sacrificed most likely a Frogadier early on, especially against aggressive decks. And then as soon as one Greninja line is hitting the discard pile, we need to recycle those as best we can. So I think two Sacred Ash is important. It means that we can go for aggressive Sycamores in the early game if we need to hit those Frogadiers and not be punished in the later game because we still need to recover back some of these Greninja break pieces at times. So I like the two of, I think it's the correct number. Most people have been going towards the two Ash. Um, some debate towards one Ash, one Super Rod. Um, I think because we are personally playing two Fishermen, it should always be uh, the Ash instead. Uh, four Trainers Mail, huge consistency card, getting us into the things that we need. And for VS Seeker as well, it's a big consistency card. Um, we are playing a few one ofs in here the Delinquent, the Lysander, the Zerosic, you can see. Recovering Fisherman is often a play that we will go for as well because it's such a big card It's a huge tempo swing if we can get four energy to the hand We can go for like double Greninja break XY Greninja and attack all in one turn. It's just such a huge swing. So um, Fisherman equates to a whole lot of damage So we need to have VS Seekers to Fisherman on the turns where we haven't been Hex Maniac basically uh, On to the supporters. I guess I should start with a Fisherman as I was just talking about him Basically, I covered it. Uh, I like the higher count of two because it's too painful to prize this guy. It's such an important card. And you want to have access to it. You want to physically see it quickly in the game. So, um, yeah, Fisherman's a very good option for this deck. Um, just so good for flooding the board and really overwhelming your opponent. That's what Greninja can do. Whenever Greninja has its abilities, it feels like it can do anything. It can beat any deck when it has its abilities available. So, on those turns where you do have abilities, i.e. you've not been hexed, um, you need to fisherman get as much value out of the snipes as you can um, while you can basically so fisherman allows us to do that One delinquent delinquent is a really awesome card in a couple of matchups um, firstly the mirror um, the mirror is a very difficult matchup to navigate because Oftentimes, it's just going to be a shadow stitching war where both players are just continually announcing shadow stitching so the other person can't use giant water shuriken and um, if people are doing this continually um it's going to be a very slow long game because rough seas is here we're playing hard charm um so really no damage will ever be dealt um so using delinquent means that we get rid of the rough seas so we are actually doing damage back to them even if it is a small amount and we're also limiting our opponent's hand size so maybe they run out of things um and we're trying to mill them out eventually so the more delinquent more delinquents that we can spam uh, pretty much you have to dedicate as many vs seekers as possible just to delinquent to either force your opponent to dead draw for a turn or just to limit cards in general just get cards out of their deck so eventually when we go for a hand refresh like an n they have a thinner deck size than we do so that we win on deck out after announcing you know like 20 more shadow stitchings it's a really awful awful horrible mirror match but it's the only way around it um, that we're playing in this deck at least Additionally, it's great for Trevenant. Um, we are only playing three rough seas, so being able to delinquent VS Seeker back delinquent. I know it's not always easy against Trevor, but we are playing uh, Lysander in this deck, so um, just playing the one physical delinquent acts as a fourth stadium anyway. Um, so being able to get rid of the uh, Dimension Valley and keep up in terms of the stadium war is a very big deal because uh, the rough seas is so big against Trevenant, it's just really setting them back a turn, basically, whenever they want to use um, their Silent Fear attacks, so pretty big. We are playing the one Lysander. 
Um, not every Greninja player does play Lysander. I really like it in this deck. Um, really big against Trev. Um, you play around Bursting Balloon, you just get out of the item lock in the first place, which is huge. Uh, force them to discard energy as well, just to retreat out of their new active Pokemon, whatever it is. Um, so plenty of reasons why the one of Lysander is big. It lets you, on the turn that you Lysander, hopefully you can uh, VS Seeker back things like Lysander, things like Delinquent, and get ahead in the game, uh, which is pretty important. Uh, I think Greninja does need to buy itself a turn or two to beat the um, Trevenant players, but if you time the Lysander well and you just happen to have it in the right time, uh, you can storm ahead in those sorts of games. So that's pretty cool for you. Um, next up, we are playing 3N. A huge card that Greninja gains from Fates Collide, of course. Um, every deck gains N, of course, but um, Greninja used to play Ace Trainer because it was typically a slower deck. Now, I prefer N to Ace Trainer because you can still use N on the first turn. Uh, so, if you only have a Froakie, you can play the N and look for Ball Search cards, whereas if you had Ace Trainer, you couldn't and you could just lose that game. So, um, I like N even though it's less disruptive in turns like 2, 3, and 4. Um, from then on in the game, and from the very first turn, it is phenomenally better than Ace Trainer. So, either play a 2-1 split of 2N, 1 Ace Trainer, if you're really confident on Ace Trainer. But at the moment, I think just 3N is the way to go for this deck. And um, N rarely punishes us too much, because um, we can, you know, use our shurikens smart. And we can uh, take, like, three prizes all in one turn, uh, rather than go down to one prize left and just hope cross our fingers that we don't get end uh, we can play smart because we can put so much damage on the board all at once um, when we're free to do so so we don't really ever get hurt by end too much it's normally our friend rather than our opponents uh, we are playing four sycamore as well it's just a huge consistency card i think you know there should never be a surprise to see four sycamore in a deck i uh, shouldn't really have to explain it too often uh, we are also playing a one of Zerosic. I really like Zerosic. It follows on from the Jirachi. It's another way around things like Vespicon Valplume, where you can just have the Zerosic, get rid of a DCE. It's a resource gone straight away, which is nice. Um, it's really big for getting rid of certain tools. Um, Aquabox players are playing a lot of Fighting Fury Belt, so getting those off things like Articuno is big, so that you can um, do a Moonlight Slash plus Giant Water Shuriken to knock them straight out, uh, so that threat is just off the board. Um, so many reasons why you like Zerosic in here. There's so many niche situations where it's just such a good card. I like having the option for sure. Onto these stadiums. Three rough seas, pretty standard stuff. With our free retreat as well, we benefit so much from rough seas. We retreat out of a Greninja break into a new attacker. Um, maybe even if it's a second Greninja break. And we can get the potential to heal the one on the bench. So we protect our threat and heal it at the same time if it's tanked to hit. We are playing the hard charms in this build, so we have effectively 190 if we have the hard charm attached. So oftentimes we will be tanking hits, and um, healing a backup is just such a big deal for us. So really, really good stuff that we have the three rough season here, as well as just countering Trev, which is a pretty good deck right now. So the three hard charm is the biggest sort of change from list that we've started to see. And this is mainly because of Aquabox. Aquabox has become a very popular deck very recently, almost overnight, since the Germany Nationals. Um, I know it was sort of waiting in the wings before then, but Germany really turned it into, like, turned people's heads and said, wow, this is a pretty tier one deck. And since then, Aquabox has been very, very popular. A really, really good deck. And um, the, the hard charm is our way around um, Articuno, and it's also our way around just ruining the numbers for them. So... If we're able to find hard charm, it means that an Articuno needs to flip two out of the three heads instead of one out of the three heads against the Frogadier and the Froki. So you're way less likely to go down four prizes, which is amazing for you. Um, obviously, you don't get knocked out by Mineral Pump either. That's also an option that players will go for just for early aggression if they're not able to get many Max Elixirs going. If they just get one and an attachment for turn and energy switch, um, then they're going to go for a Mineral Pump. So... Instead, just slap that hard charm on, make them um, do other plays, basically. So that's really awesome. And then even as you approach the late game, 130 HP is a grenade hammer. Now with a hard charm, we are out of that range. So we can tank the hit, get the rough seas, retreat into a new Greninja, whatever we want. So the three hard charm is really, really key against um, the Aquabox deck. It's really the only way Greninja survives against this deck. So very, very big card, I'd say. 
Um, additionally, when we hit the late game against Night March, um, that 190 HP is just slightly more annoying. And because we are a non EX deck, um, they need to be very conservative with their Night Marches because they need to have, you know, six to deal with us overall, uh, pretty much. So having that extra 20 means they, ha they have to discard an extra Pokemon, which then forces them into a slightly more awkward game later on in the game. So um, the Hard Charm is really cool there as well. Um, really, really nice card. I know Muscle Band makes math pretty awesome for this deck. Um, that's one consideration why we still play the XY Greninja. That can be our Muscle Band if we have it in play and we can get those extra 30 snipes. So I think with Hard Charm, the XY makes a lot more sense. Um, so that is a consideration for sure. Um, but maybe I can see going down to two Hard Charm and have one Muscle Band in here because the math can be just fixed quite nicely. But at the moment, I'm just fully focused on trying to deal with the meta. And right now, the meta game is heavily Aqua Box because it's a very, very, very powerful deck. So there we go. Three Hard Charm is our way around those things. Finally, 8 Energy. I think pretty much everyone has landed on 8. I think I've not seen a list for a while that has any more or less than 8 Energy. I think pretty much everyone is in agreement that 8 is the standard number for Greninja. Um, so yeah, I've stuck with the trend. There we go. So let's look at some other... In inclusions or exclusions i should say from the deck octillery is a debate that's been going on since the start of greninja basically um, i know it started off as a very common card in greninja then it faded out completely for sure but now people are considering it once again because n is back and the deck is a combo deck i was saying when we when i was showing off n that we don't really suffer against n too much because we have like three or four cards off the end after we take our top deck most games but even then, going down to a three or four card hand when you need to hit energy, you need to sometimes even just hit VS Seeker for Fisherman for a big splurge of damage all over the board to win the game. Um, having its Abyssal Hand at our disposal can be great for playing around N. So um, you can consider a 1-1 one, one line of Octillery. I'm personally not playing it because it kind of forces you to play things like either AZ or Floatstone because Octillery has a chunky retreat cost and it can be stalled quite often. So... Um, that can really just put you back a few turns. So that's why I'm not playing Octillery, but I can definitely see why players want to play Octillery in their lists. Um, also, even the Remoraid um, serves a pretty cool purpose of being able to discard stadiums against Trevenant, which is a pretty cool thing to do, actually. Um, it can really help you out sometimes. So the 1-1 one, one Octillery line can put in work for random situations. Um, for Pokemon, what else is there? There's also Durant. Durant once featured... Uh, because of the chip off attack it's like i was saying with delinquent it's a mirror match type card where you're trying to limit uh, the amount of cards they have physically playable so that they have less than you when it comes down to using an n or something or a judge or whatever it is so um durant is still an option i think just stick with delinquent has been fine for me um also deden or dedene this is a decent option as well um, i know if people are worried about mega rayquaza mega ray is actually one that I'm going to profile quite soon because I think it does have some viability in this format. Yeah, I know that Night March is pretty horrible, but by playing Jolteons, it's not the worst matchup. Like it is and it isn't. You can still steal get steal games against Night March. So um, regardless, Rayquaza is going to be one I talk about later on. Um, I think later in the week, hopefully I get it out. Fingers crossed. Maybe next week. I've got a busy week, but um, yes, the Den is pretty good against. Um, Rayquaza. Because we are not playing Muscle Band in this list, I've not put the Dene in. If you are playing Muscle Bands, the Dene makes more sense because you can deal with Rayquazas a lot quicker as a non EX and you can recycle this with Ash a couple of times. Supplement that with Giant Mortar Shurikens and you're dealing with Rays a lot better. So, bear that in mind. Also, the Entrainment is just a good attack if you happen to start with the Dene. Um, it's fine as well. Gets you into your Frokies, which is all you really need. So, on to um, items and supporters mainly. Uh, supporter options. I know Wally is a card that's been in and out of this deck. Um, personally, Wally is currently out for me. Um, mainly because we have the 3N now. Um, Wally was sort of in here because we just needed to hit our Pokemon. And it was an extra couple of cards that could do that. Um, but now that we have the N, I feel like we have much nicer just shuffle draw that we can do in the early games to get into our Pokemon a lot of the time. There's also the debate that um, Wally's great against item lock. Um, so if you're paranoid about item lock, you can go down one Fisherman, one um, Evo Soda, and then plus two Wally. I think that would be the thing that I'd go for if you're very paranoid about the item locking decks. Wally's still a really good option for you. Um, I'm not going to argue if anyone does choose to play Wally. 
Uh, Scarlet is another card that fits in sometimes to um, the Greninja deck. Can't really see the space other than cutting a Fisherman potentially, um, but it's just going to help you search out the things. It's another just good out for the things that you need. Good against Trev as well because you can search out a Rough Seas, which is pretty cool. Um, there's even Steven. <laughs> um, I know that's a rhyme, but um, I know a couple of players have been picking up Steven and going with Greninja. It's actually a pretty cool option. Um, where you just, instead of playing a letter, maybe just play Steven instead. It's again one of these cards, if you're very paranoid about item lock, play Steven instead, Get guarantee yourself a water energy and a supporter for next turn. It's a big consistency card. Um, against stuff like um, Trevenant, you can get your water, you can get a Lysander, you're quite happy with that. So I can see many situations where the Steven's actually a nice one of in this deck, and it's a really underrated supporter. There's random decks that really benefit from Steven, and this could be one of them. So... Try that out if you are willing. Also, it's kind of mentioned a couple of times, Muscle Band, it's still a good option for the deck. I think if you're not worried about the Aqua Box decks, if you know that there's going to be a lot of Grass decks around, I know Danish Nationals had um, a Vespiquen deck in the final, so people are already trying to counter the Aqua Box players. So if you think it's going to be too heavily countered that people are going to be scared to play Aqua Box, be greedy, go back to Muscle Band, get more damage for every other matchup. It's a no-brainer, really. At the moment, I'm paranoid about Aqua Box, so the hard charms have been thrown in. If um, those sorts of decks start dying down, uh, I don't think I'd ever play more than two Muscle Band, but you gain a space, you can get rid of the hard charms and put Muscle Bands in, be more greedy uh, for more damage. But there we go, a whole bunch of options for the Greninja deck. I'll just make sure this is all saved. And uh, we'll jump into the ladder now. Uh, Greninja... Other than um, Sceptile, Mega Sceptile, I think this has a bunch of okay matchups. I think the Hard Charm kind of balances out the Aqua Box, so. There's not too much that you should fear as a Greninja player. And uh, that's a pretty good thing. Good thing to say. Especially for like a Worlds format where there's so many different players bringing so many different decks, um, different testing circles and stuff like that, different metagames that they're all coming from. It's a real, like, very difficult tournament just to predict um so you just want a deck that sets up against anything and uh greninja pretty much does that so that's an appealing appealing option for this deck and i can i can see a few players picking up greninja for worlds for sure uh we get an early mulligan the deck playing only six basics has a pretty frequent mulligan it uh, looks like from the sleeves at least we're up against a dark deck uh, we reveal the mulligan and once again, like I say, I think we have like between a 25 and 30% chance of getting a basic. So, um, so far, three mulligans is statistically normal. Four is statistically not normal. <laughs> uh, there we go. And we have the Froki. Because we have Dive Ball in hand, I'm happy to promote Froki for now. And we'll just hold the Jirachi for now as well. We're giving our opponent a lot of mulligan draws. And they are going first, so that's pretty awkward. Uh, the only reason to put down the Jirachi straight away is if I'm playing around Latios, but I'm not. And we're not against Latios. Hooray. <laughs> We've not lost yet. Uh, so we're going to see a Muscle Band and an attachment to the Uveltal on the bench. And with a Shauna. Wow. With N in format, I never thought I'd see Shauna again. <laughs> but there we go. Still alive and kicking. Okay. Uh, we actually draw into a Froakie. And uh, we can't commit this attachment, even though I'd love to. Um, we, I'd love to try and go for the Paralysis, but um, we need to retain this. Maybe if I had a Hard Charm, I would have attached. Been a bit more brave, but even then, we lose to like a Lysander. So, we have to hold this. Looks like a payment of retreat from Shaman. It works nicely with Oblivion Wing as long as they can find another Pokemon this turn. I wonder what other attackers he's playing. I know quite frequently. Oh wow, the Reverse Valley is really nice for him. So 30 plus the 20 from Muscle Band plus the 10 from Reverse Valley actually knocks out the Froki. So that's pretty cool. Oh, Giovanni's scheme as well, just to draw cards. That's pretty sad. Um, but hey, that's the whole point of Giovanni. It's more than just an extra 20 when you're in. Uh, bad, it's a bad spot, you can get those extra cards, so our opponent taking the prize here might have to attach back to the Shaman EX. I still think it's better than, than the Jirachi because 
he knows we're not playing special energy as a Greninja deck. So I'd like to see it go onto the Shaman EX again. Yep. And also, Shaman EX is more of a stall target, so you just want to put the energy there anyway. So, duplicates. Hooray. No supporter just yet, which is kind of awkward, but uh, for now we'll just duplicates. And we have all of them, so I'm happy. It's always a good thing when you have a lot of Frogadier. Another option I should have actually said was Town Map. Town Map is for when your prizes are horrible, you can still dig out those extra frogs, but at the same time I think uh, just having the two Sacred Ashes is still sort of a way around that. Just try and get them back into the deck as quickly as possible. So, looks like we're up against an aggressive Darkrai EX deck. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. There we go. And Vieseka for Giovanni for three more cards again, it looks like. Oh, no, he's going to take the damage option, right? Yeah, he's going to take the damage for the extra knockout, the early pressure. And we have a few Greninjas that we can start splurting out now. Only one energy in hand, so... Um, looks like... Oh, two energy in hand. <laughs> um... I think I might just go for one Greninja here, not search out the other one, because I'd like to search out the break instead next turn. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to survive a hit next turn. This is doing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, okay. We should be fine. <clears throat> Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. We should be safe to just attach and slash here. Seeing as our opponent got the extra 20 damage for like tempo, it makes me think they had another supporter in hand, unless they were really banking on a good um, prize card instead. No supporter so far is awkward, but we still have had a fairly typical start. And we are going to see an Ultra Ball, so potentially even a Shadow Stitching was better there. Oh, but they're going for Malamar. Never mind. Uh, Malamar going for Sleep Flips is awkward, but we... Oh, cool. We get End out. Hopefully we draw into some supporters now. And we do. Nice. And if he doesn't play around Delinquent, like if he plays another card this turn, we can get a big Delinquent off. Just an Oblivion Wing for 60. With the Muscle Band and Stadium, bear in mind. So first things first, we'll go for the Trainer's Mail, looking for a Ball Search card. Ooh, uh, just Level Ball is not its not the Ball Search I was after, but we'll still take it um, over the VS Seeker because there was no option. Uh, and we'll just grab out a Froakie. Because there is a Frogadier already in the discard pile, it's fine to start benching more. Um, my attachment for turn is an interesting one. So... If I attach the bench, it's pretty all in on the end. Uh, but we still have three, four ball search cards to try and get there. Way safer just to attach to the active, right? And still N. Because he's played around delinquent. Or he just happened to play around delinquent. Is it important enough for me to get a giant, uh, just a regular shuriken in? Uh, because damage is so nice. I think I'm going to keep the water energy uh, for now. Oh man, we missed the break, which is kind of sad. We also missed rough seas, which is also kind of sad. We do, however, get the water energy back for a regular shuriken here. So, yeah, it's going to be a moonlight slash, so this shuriken is going to go to a Jirachi promo. Because we kind of need prizes. Because <laughs> our hand is pretty dead. Oh, cool. Sycamore. We're kind of more happy with that now. So, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8. Oh, he plays elixirs. Okay. Missed an elixir. There's an attachment. There's a trainer's mail. Into a sycamore. Nice. Six. It's 
20 plus, right? Yeah, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 reduced. No, it's still perfect numbers. Actually, it's 1 over. Kind of a big miss that we missed the break and the regular Greninja there. Kind of sad. <clears throat> So we're going to Frogadier here. There's a lot that we need this turn. Oh, a dive ball is such a good start. Really good start for us. Uh, I think I'll take the prize now. Trainer's mail. What can I get off mail that's that helpful? I don't even need to sick him all too badly this turn. Ooh, rough seas is kind of big. Also dive ball. Dive ball and break evolve here. I don't need rough seas too much just yet. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. We've got 150 effective health, so I think dive ball and hold it might be fine. Could get a fisherman in while we have the chance. I think I will do that. It's like no different if we're going to Sycamore anyway. The fisherman still goes in the discard pile, so we might as well get it now. And um, we'll go for Moonlight Slash with the recovery of energy as well. Just for more damage on this threat here. <sighs> so we see a manual attachment to the Dark Cry on the bench. Hex Maniac is one of this deck's biggest problems. And a Dark Pulse for 100. There's a break. I think I'm just going to double break evolve here. It might well be a bubble this turn as well. Two can play at the old status condition game, Mr. Malamar. It does give him an extra attachment, but this force is like Lysanders and stuff. The damage would have been kind of cool, but... If I was going to retreat into anything, it would have been here. And I don't think the Mist Slash is good enough. So, big old bubble. Do the work. Ah, never lucky. Gotta love bubble, though. <laughs> On the bubble. So, we see another attachment to the Dark Cry. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Ah, VS Seeker for Hex. Yeah. Boo. Apparently with two prizes left, uh, Rough Seas is good. We'll go Rough Seas here. I was tempted to go Ash, but it's too many easy prizes at this point. We need to sort of tank a few. And that's kind of why uh, the Hard Charm is cool. So we'll now go into this one, get some damage on. Maybe I should have done that instead of the bubble. Obviously hindsight, when you miss the bubble, it kind of feels better, but... Uh, maybe the raw damage was better there. There's an attachment, so now a Lysander does get him in range, which would be pretty awkward. VS Seeker for Hex again, yeah, boo. Sad times. Yep, there's a hex chain going on. And a dark pulse for 150. A lot of HPs, these Greninjas. Ooh, VS Seeker for N is pretty sweet here. We'll definitely do it. Just 
try and get out of this hex chain. Right. Are any of these worth benching? Don't feel like I'm ever going to get another thing set up. Um, by taking some energy off the board, it makes the Froki and Jirachi easy targets. So we shall retreat. And it's times like this where the muscle band is kind of key <laughs> that we don't have. But hey. At the same time, we're very not far away from getting back into this game. There's an attachment to the Malamar. And just the Dark Pulse for the knockout. Our manual attachment has to be right. So we heal. We go up to eighty. Eighty. We can have effectively a hundred health if we get the hard charm. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Rip. Okay. How do I move this Greninja so I can go for a bubble? I can't. See, this is why War Shuriken Greninja is so much worse. Uh. Otherwise, I could free retreat and go for a bubble and not be dead here. Lots of ends. Lysander's not an option for a stall. Uh, he has the game in on board. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. How do I not lose here? I think without a, wow, we don't even have a sycamore in here. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, misplaced. I think I've already lost, so. Yeah, sure. Probably should have benched Jirachi as well. Uh, yeah, we lose. Pretty sure if we got the bubble heads, we would have won. Also pretty sure if I'd misslashed rather than bubbled, I would have won. Oops. I like the 50-50s. It's just for the viewers, guys. Trust. <laughs> just for the suspense. Hmm. Yeah, thinking about it now, the damage was probably better at the time. Anyway, we got hex chained quite effectively. Didn't find N really till it was too late. We'll see what we can do in this game. And we are leading Jirachi. Do have a dive ball and a sycamore though, so it's not all bad. Let's see what we're up against. Gallade. Whoa. PTCGO. <laughs> the best testing grounds around. Well then. Watch me lose now. Well, we've prized the frog and deer, which is pretty bad. Yeah, we take fisherman just because it's out of the deck. One less bad top deck. We hold rough seeds because I feel like if he's playing a snipey game, it's fine. Um, unless I want to go for the Sycamore now. I think I do actually because I need an attachment this turn if he doesn't knock out Jirachi. Yeah. I need to, I need to discard this stuff. Oh, look at this hand. So bad because next turn I think I have to Sycamore. Ah, oh, So bad. I'm actually upset. <laughs> oh my goodness wow I might even just oh no I can't even <sighs> I 
Getting that swift lunge in. Sweet. And this is why we play two Sacred Ash. Because <laughs> of times like this. Uh, do I even want to? Oh yeah, I'm on the break back for sure. <sighs> level ball. This is why we play level ball. Does 20 more for each prize, for each of your remaining. Worrying. So the hard charm's not relevant enough. If you plus 20 more for each of your remaining. Okay, hard charm doesn't do anything. <clears throat> Getting shrecked by Gallade. Big damage. D Valley. Spirit Linku. And a sycamore. Playing delayed bats. Yep. Seems about right. Well, unbelievable. Um, right, we need to uh, have a big end here. Big train as well. Big sycamore instead of big end. Hmm. It does need to be big here. We need to hit a bull search card or a one of. XY Ninja. Um, big enough to get rid of a break. We already have to put back a lot of targets. Mm, I don't feel comfortable getting rid of the break now. We only have one Ash. Oh, thank goodness. We got it. Do I Ash now or Ash next turn? I think I bench. So I get back next turn. Frogadier, Frogadier, Greninja, Greninja. Oh, triple Greninja. Yeah. We hold Ash. <sighs> Goodness sake. Probably an error as well that I attached the hard charm to this one. Or oh, I should have promoted the one without hard charm. Because this turn he can still get the piercing prizes knockout but the following Tony couldn't mm. playing very badly because it's a bad deck <laughs> his deck not mine <clears throat> and piercing prizes but you have to remember Greninja is very used to going down prizes uh, you shouldn't ever worry about that sort of thing. It happens. <laughs> uh, we mail before the Ash because we have way better odds. And we will take the letter. How many energy in our discard pile? Three already? Okay, I'll just get one then. So if we whiff, um, if we whiff one of these Greninjas, we can still duplicates. That's why we'll get rid of the Froakie just for the extra slot. We do hit a Greninja though. We will then play the Dive Ball for higher odds of Hard Charm. Do we have Hard Charms left? We should have Hard Charms left. Hard Charm, please. 
brutal. Uh, we don't really need to put the rough seas in yet. We'll get the raw damage in while we can. Kapow. Chose not to put this guy in, but he actually would be really good in this situation. <sighs> hmm, misplays upon misplays, it looks like. Oops. This Gallade is insane. Luckily, our opponent's not got much else going yet. Here he goes. Looks like he's digging for maybe the Mega. Oh, just Golbat. Oh, excuse my yawning, that's very rude. <laughs> Put it on the active. It actually makes sense if he already had the Mega. That's fine. And a Shauna again. We see a Shauna. Two Shaunas in two games. What? What? <laughs> Only on PTCGO. Oh, seriously. I'm getting mad. See, I'm a player that always likes to be on the front foot. Greninja's really a deck that Jack should have profiled. <laughs> because uh, he likes control decks. I like aggro. <laughs> and you can see I'm just I'm not happy in this position. Being behind even though I know this deck has big comeback potential. But we are dealing with the uh, the Glade this turn, and that's important. Um, I think it's important enough to find another Greninja that we... Is it, though? Oh, I always like saving energy, but I guess we can't find a break anyway. It's not really worth it. So we'll Sycamore. We have a very thin deck. But we can end ourselves back. Okay. Has to be Moonlight Slash for the damage. We missed the Greninja as well, which is sad. There's the Hard Charm as well. So there is the Golbat in the active. It's a free retreater, of course, so that's by far the best option. Let's see what our opponent can come up with. If he goes Attachment, um, Spirit Link, Mega, Gold, uh, Crobat, I'd be pretty sad. Oh, and D-Valley, but that's asking a lot. Watch it happen before your very eyes. <laughs> yep, he's dreaming big. Oh boy. Sycamore. Oh, I have to get rid of a Mega. Pretty gross. Spirit Link. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't. Don't you dare. No. <laughs> I, I forbid you to do that. Seriously. No! <laughs> Most consistent deck in format, Gallade. Everyone knows. <sighs> Come on, man. So, I'm not playing Greninja for Worlds. <laughs> oh my goodness. The dream. Seriously. So sad. I could delinquent. Just kidding, it's not in the discard pile. Uh, we'll end.
Don't need to shadow stitching just yet because he doesn't have any Zubats on the bench, so we'll hold it. Get the damage in while we can. Man, this is pretty awkward. Getting shrekt by Gallade. Hmm. Another Shauna. <laughs> Ugh, you don't know how much that infuriates me. Maybe you do. Maybe. Oh man. I was in such a good mood before this video. <laughs> oh. Oh, gross. Wait, what? Pretty sure that was the wrong move. Pretty sure, because he already attached to Wob. It made sense if he was attaching back to the Glade, but... This is a window of opportunity for us. Oh, boy. We don't play AZ or anything. Yuck. You can't actually deny that in any way, because again, we don't have delinquent. Hmm. Fun. Uh, every card is pointless. Cool. Seems legit. He's actually got himself a prize off this, and it makes me sad. So, Gilead getting one attachment. If he has Mega Turbo, I'm actually just leaving this game. Even though it's not game over, like, it's just. It is game over, even though it's not, if that makes sense. Okay, let's go, go to the Crobat. It's fine. Come on, Greninja Break, please. Please, Greninja Break. Yeah! The crowd goes wild. As I'm sure you all did. Uh, do I end? Yeah, of course I end. Come on. Come back is on. Unplayable, unplayable, unplayable. Just hope he hasn't drawn energy. Um, slash. Delinquent, we just have to hold out for one turn. Cross your fingers, boys. <laughs> oh dear, I bet I bet he has a shorter. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> no. oh. What? Ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. Seriously. Oh, the dream. What is end to this guy? Oh, my. Oh, I'm losing the will. Seriously. Oh, my. Well played. Still needs to find an energy, right? Oh no, he can retreat into Wob. Can he retreat into Wob? No, he can't. We haven't officially lost. But we have. You know, I'm just telling you that he has the cards he needs because... N is such a soul-crushing card, man. Ah, we lost to a Glade Bats deck. Get out of my life, seriously. Oh. There's no reason to stitching. Because I've already resigned myself to a loss. And we need to win in a turn if he doesn't have the win now. 
This guy's probably playing like 17 energy because it's like a starter deck. Well, there's Greninja. It can lose to Darkrai Malamar and Delayed Bats. So, probably a good world to pick. I'm going to go cry. Cheers, guys. See you in the next video.